Amanda Bowen. I know most of you. Um, I, like Pete, consider myself a broadly curious earth scientist who works in a lot of different things, but I'm most of my research is, is geared around the question of how do surface environments and somewhat shallow subsurface environments change in response to changing environmental conditions. And sometimes those conditions are changes in climate, changes in fluid chemistry, changes in the hydrology of the system, changes in the composition of the, of the environment, changes in the structural setting, um, and trying to see how that all gets recorded and preserved and what are the processes that are going on between fluids and sediments in those environments. I just have to put my contact <laughs> <laughs> um, So uh, this has been applied to a lot of different types of projects using a lot of different types of tools. In my lab we have some toys such as a really great petrographic microscope, so looking at, at microstructures and mineralogy and textures of things like grain coatings and orthogenic cements and minerals, so minerals that are forming in situ in pore spaces or in aqueous environments such as the salt flats. Um, and I've worked quite a bit in extreme environments, so places that are either really salty or really acidic or really arid. Um, and, and interesting minerals form in those places that give you some unique indicators of how the environments have changed through time. Um, so we've got the petrographic microscope. We also look a lot at chemistry, um, a lot of different types of geochemistry. <coughs> That's a core scanner, so if you have any cores and you want to get millimeter scale elemental data, that's a, a tool that you can use for that. Um, we've also been playing with that to analyze brines, and it turns out it's okay for analyzing some brines. More from Evan on that later. Currently, I have three PhD students working in my group Evan Kipnis, Jory Lerbach, and Jeremiah Bernal, who are all working on different aspects of, of questions around how fluids and sediments interact, how landscapes evolve, and response to different changes. More recently, this research has involved changes related to humans and how humans are changing um, sedimentological and hydrological processes in various landscapes, such as the salt flats, um, where I've got a lot of active research going on. Um, I also use a lot of remote sensing if we want to zoom out and look at a macro scale system, so reflectance spectroscopy, airborne or spaceborne spectroscopy to kind of map out how mineralogy changes through those systems. Um, and my work tends to be very collaborative and interdisciplinary. I'm always excited to learn new tricks and new tools, and so I've collaborated with many of you in this room, and I'm excited to always throw something new at a question rather than be like, I'm gonna use this tool to answer a lot of questions. I've got my questions, and I'm gonna use whatever tool we can get our hands on to try to answer that. So that allows me to learn a lot from my students. They always bring new tools and questions to, to the lab. Um, and I'm always learning new things, and I don't even get to tell you about the GCSC, but <laughs> I am also like Pete giving a DLS on November 14th. Ooh. I was told I would be doing that, and so you can learn more then. Thank you.